Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ryan, Ryan Crystal's Reviews, AKA the Hot Toy Collector, back with another Hot Toys unboxing and review for you today. Today we are gonna be checking out the Death Watch Mandalorian. This is TMS026, part of the TV series of Hot Toys. So let's go ahead and hit the intro and let's do it. Okay, so here we have the box of the Death Watch Mandalorian. As you can see here, we got a great shot here on the front of the figure. And then we have our banding on the bottom there. It looks really nice. We go to the side here. We get a nice shot of the figure there. And then we get our information, credits, legal stuff in the back. And then we get the banding right there. So let's go ahead and pop this guy open. And of course we get a beautiful title card artwork. And really looking forward to having this figure. I've heard a lot of good things about this figure from people that have already had it. So, and have had it and had an opportunity to play around with it. So I'm looking forward to it. So let's go ahead and get him out of the box and check him out. Okay, so he's gonna come in your typical Hot Toys clamshell. It's just one tray. There's no special trays underneath or anything like that. So you can see we've got the figure right here. It looks really nice. We've got a jet pack. We've got a couple blaster for the jet pack. We've got a few sets of hands. We get an extra little piece of armor that looks like it's Velcroed. And then we get a couple of guns. Of course, we get our Star Wars base that's right there. So we're gonna get him out, look at him here. It looks really cool. I mean, he's a Mandalorian, right? So he's going to look like Boba Fett and uh, Mando and all that. So this is a really cool figure. I love this fabric underneath. Uh, Mando has that same style of fabric. It's just he's a different look to him, and it looks really good. There's a lot of padding. I'm feeling a lot of padding. There's a, some padding right there. You know, he's got that fatter body that you're going to have with the, with the Mandalorian figures. So let's go ahead and get the accessories out and let's take a look at all the accessories and let's take a look and see everything that he comes with. Okay, so here are the accessories that he comes with. So let's take a look at the base first. So we're gonna get that same style of base that we get with Mando and IG-11 for that matter. So go check out those videos if you wanna check those out on the channel. Um, so it's this sandy kind of base, like a Tatooine style. I don't remember what, what system they're on. It's been a while since I've watched, uh, uh, Mandalorian. I need to go back and rewatch it because I really enjoyed the show. It's a great show. Looking forward. They have shown that season three has begun to, uh, go into production, which is exciting. So hopefully we aren't too far out from that. And Book of Boba Fett is right around the corner. So we get our Star Wars Death Watch Mandalorian nameplate. And it's just your kind of your typical Star Wars base with this Sandy. I don't like that they put the footprints. I wish they wouldn't do that. I wish they'd just leave it like this, but hey, it is what it is. So with Death Watch, you're gonna get the dynamic stand. So this is just gonna screw into here, like so. And then you put your grabber on there, however you wanna do it. And that way you can pose him flying um, or you can pose him on the ground, however you want to do it. So I'm glad that they provide that option because I think there's a lot of times that some of these bases they provide with some of the figures, we should get more of the dynamic style uh, bases, but we don't. So I'm glad that they did that with this one. So let's take a look at the jet pack. So this looks really cool and it's really nice. I mean, it's kind of that same style jet pack uh, that we got with Mando and we get with Boba Fett. Obviously it's this blue color that we get for the Death Watch that matches the same style of armor and it should be magnetic. It is, so that's nice. And I like that they've, I like that Hot Toys continues to change things and update stuff and add to their figures. So we get these two uh, effects for the uh, jetpack so they just peg right in there and then what i like is these right here have a little bit of articulation to them as you can see 
So you can kind of get it to where it's maybe more, a little more back like that, or if you want to go that way with it, however, which way you want to go with it. So I like that they add that. That's a nice touch. So he comes with two guns. So we're going to look at the first one. This is the, this is more of like a blaster rifle. Kind of reminds me of Boba Fett's gun a little bit. And it's got a cool scope on the top. Let's see if we get enough light here. If not, I may have to adjust some lighting. Let's let's adjust some lighting. We're doing everything on the fly today. We can adjust some lighting. There we go. That's probably too bright. But you can see. Let's let's have it. I tell you what, we're gonna do. We're gonna play around with this. Sorry. I'm gonna see if we can't get it a little bit better. That's probably gonna cast too much. Yeah, it's gonna cast too much shadow. I'm not the best when it comes to lighting for some reason. I've not really understood that art form of it yet. Um, but we are trying. Okay, so there's that's a little bit better. Okay, so you can see here we get nice effects, a nice paint application on that. And there it is on the other side. You get a little bit of a weathering effect there. It looks really cool. And there's a little bit of weathering effects on this too. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice little blaster. Like I said, it reminds me of Boba Fett's. And then we get like a blaster pistol that reminds me of Captain Rex's blaster pistols. Um, I'm sure there are people out there that know the name of all these blasters and everything. I don't. I love Star Wars, but I've never really gotten into all the different names and everything and all that good stuff. So we get one extra piece of plating armor that is Velcroed. And I believe this is for his knee would be my guess yes so this piece right here came off it's got that velcro on it you can see and we could just put that on like that if you want to i think yeah that one looks like it's got i guess you can change both those out that's got velcro on it too so it gives you a little bit of a different posing option if you want to go that route and then we got the hands here so we get a nice look of the detail here on the uh, armor there on for the top of the hand. And this is just a gloved fist hand. Looks real cool. And you get two of those right, left, and then you get trigger hands right and left. So he doesn't come with a lot of hands. And of course, on the figure himself, and we will attempt to take off the plastic without ruining anything. We'll just set him there for now. On the figure itself, you get kind of this open hand. It's just more like a gesturing hand, I guess. It's not really, it's not really going to hold anything here. Um, I guess you could get it to hold the blaster this way, if you wanted, or even if you wanted to hold it that way, you could. So there's a there's some there's some different options there. So now that we've taken a look at all the different accessories, let's go ahead and get the figure back out here. And let's take a closer look at the Death Watch Mandalorian himself. All right, so here is Death Watch Mandalorian himself. As you can see here, he's got that bluish, greenish style armor. So it's a little bit different than Mando is in the Biscar armor, which is, you know, that chrome, bright silver color. So let's kind of zoom in here. We'll bring him a little closer to the camera. So you can see here. The details on the helmet look really nice. He's got a little bit of weathering here, which looks really cool. Of course, then his scope is articulated, so you can move it up and down. And then we take a look here at the chest armor. It looks really cool. He's got a couple of like blaster style effects. He's been in some combat. He's seen some things, man. And then we get his, his symbol here on his left shoulder. And then we get a, a look at the back here. Now, this does have some Velcro to it. So if you wanted to, you probably could remove this and mess around with it. I don't know why you would. But if need be, you could do that. Uh, maybe to adjust it or whatever that might be. I'm not really sure. So we've got a belt with a couple of different pouches. And then he's got a flat back here. Doesn't really go up. And then we've got a spot here for his... Uh, rifle or excuse me for the pistol we get to look here at the gauntlets look really cool now he doesn't have anything that shoots out of his gauntlets like mando does or like boba does but it, i don't 
recall um, a situation where he actually did that in the show. You can see these are a little bit different. This looks like it's controlled for, say, like the jetpack for like missiles or something like that. And then this looks like right here. Let me get the light on there. That's some sort. Looks like that's some sort of weapon as well. And then you get a couple of different leg um, armor pieces. We get a couple knee pieces. And then we get a look at the boots here. They look really cool. Go all the way up to the calf. And the feet do have some articulation to them, so they're not restricted. I, they've done a lot better with the boots here in the last few figures on figures that have boots. And uh, In the past, with the figures that have had boots, they've struggled with trying to figure out how to get articulation and still get that good classic look. Uh, Kylo Ren is a prime example of that, that struggles with that. So articulation-wise, so he can look... Pretty much, head can go all the way around. You can only kind of look down about like that. That's about as much. And then up, that's about as much. So he doesn't really get that. Remember, Mando's could go down a lot because, you know, when Mando walks around, he basically is always kind of looking down. So that's one thing when you're posing Mando, you want to keep that in mind. You want to tilt that head a little bit downward because it's always... The way he walks, the way he carries himself, he's always kind of looking down. like Almost like he's looking down through the very top part of his visor there. So, arm-wise, you're not going to get a lot of articulation because you're going to have issues here with the armor. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, you do get the typical butterfly joint at the shoulder, swivel, and of course we get our bicep, boom, and we get a little bit of swivel. But again, because of this and contacting this and other pieces around here, you're not gonna get a lot of articulation. I mean, I'm pushing it pretty far, almost to the point of it breaking. And then of course, you know, swivel on the hand, typical hand peg for the hot toys. Chest wise and waist from the sternum, he actually gets a little more bend than what I thought he was gonna get. Uh, Mando, if you recall, doesn't get much at all. So I'm, Pleasantly surprised to see that for sure. And then looking back, he can tilt back that much. So that's actually a little more that they've, the Mando figure had the fat suit in him, what we call the fat suit. So this one, they've gone back to that. He's a little bit skinnier, doesn't have as much chunk to him. So he's got a little more movement here in his waist. And of course he'll twist that way and that way pretty good. Leg wise, you're going to get about what you got with Mando. You're going to get be able to kick out about like that. Double jointed knees. And then we already took a look at the feet. It was pretty good there. So that is the articulation. And, you know, pleasantly surprised with the articulation we get on the figure. I was expecting him to be a little bit more like Mando. Uh, but he doesn't have that, that bigger, heavier, fatter suit underneath that Mando had. So we should be able to get him in some good poses. So let's go ahead and let's get some accessories out here on him and let's take a look and just put him in a couple poses and see what we can do. So you can see here, we just have him in a very simple pose just with the pistol, just kind of in that attack position, almost ready to fire off a couple rounds. Get a good look here. Looks really nice. I love the brown color. Looks really good. And I love the wearing on the boots. I didn't talk about that when I was talking about the boots, but you get a little bit of that wear on there. It looks really cool. And the good thing is he doesn't have a cape. So, you know, with Mando, you kind of had to decide, okay, am I going to pose him with the rifle on his back? And then I've got to sacrifice having the jetpack, or do I want to do the jetpack? And then sacrifice having, not having the blaster rifle, the, the, what I would call the long range sniper rifle, I guess. Uh, I posed him with the rifle just because I like that look a little bit better. So this one I'll be posing with, you, you pose him with the jetpack the whole time. I'm not sure why you wouldn't. So there's one pose. So here comes another. All right. So now we've got him in a more dynamic pose. I've utilized the stand. I actually put my knife on the stand to help weigh it down a little bit because I've got him so far back, kind of like he's been 
Like he just landed and then boom, someone's shooting at him. So now he's, he's jumping back. You can see here, it looks really cool. And I utilize the jetpack flames right there. The only bad thing about this, as you can see, we go back behind here. When you use the dynamic stand, the jetpack and the flames kind of co have kind of a little bit of a problem with the, the waist grabber. So you got to be kind of weary of that a little bit. Um, what I did was to get his arm more up into this position, I actually removed this piece is just Velcroed on. So I took that piece off, moved his arm the way I kind of wanted it, and then slapped that piece back on there. So this is kind of a cool little pose. Um, if you were going to do this pose in your Detolf, uh, I would be weary of the base. I would definitely want to put something on it to weigh it down because if I take that knife off, he's probably going to tip backwards. So uh, that's it for this video. I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Please follow me over on Instagram, the Hot Toys Collector. I'm going to be posting a lot of photos of this guy. Um, I'm always, always doing photos and doing some Photoshop in there. So come on over. Please uh, follow me over there. I would really appreciate it. And it really helps support the channel, support me. And uh, I'm coming out with a new line of character posters with using the Hot Toys figures which i think are going to be kind of fun so please uh stay tuned for those i've already already kind of posted a preview of a gamora from guardians 2 not my best work but still you know for what we've got to do what we go with with these figures you know we get very still heads and things like that we don't get a lot of dynamic facial expressions and things like that so i appreciate it and i hope everyone has a great day and we will see you in the next video